Welcome back to Split the Party. As always, I'm your host, Steve Osmond, and today we are going to talk about Traders of Osaka. It's a game created by Susumu Kawasaki and put out by Z-Man Games, a company I really love. Uh, it was originally known as Traders of Carthage. They created that. It was very popular. It went out of print, and a while later they came out with Traders of Osaka, which actually is the same game. It's just got a different skin on the map and slightly different look to the cards, but you're playing the same way. The goal of the game is to be the person who sold the most goods at the market, um, who's trading the most goods across these seaways here. You're going from Osaka through the sea here to Edo. Every, time, every turn on a player's turn, they will go through three actions. They start by choosing whether or not to buy out the entire market, which is the lower row of cards here. In order to do that, they have to have cards in their hand enough to pay for all of the market. You can't pick and choose. Now, the way you pay for it is with the gold values at the top left of your cards. If you can't afford everything, then you move on to the second action. The second action is to draw one of these cards into your hand to take as money. So I just increased the value of my hand and decreased the value of the market. If I can purchase everything, then I take all of these face up and I place them in front of me. When they're placed in front of me, it's easiest you know, to organize them by color. And for each color, for green, I, I sold one, or I bought one good. So I'll move the green ship one space. For red and yellow, I, I purchased two goods each. Now, whether it's two or five, it doesn't matter. Anything over one will move the ship two spaces. So both of these are going to move two spaces. Now, the different spaces on the board uh, have different significance for the most part. Obviously, you're trying to get to Edo. When, there's, when you get to Edo, you trigger a payoff. Payoff is for every good in your hand, you'll go through a, uh, a little bit of a mathematical equation. It's my only kind of uh, kvetch about the game is because there, there's a little bit of everything's really smooth, and then you get here and you got to do a little bit of math. Say I sold these two cards. I would take whichever one had the highest value. In this case, they're both the same. So I take a three. I multiply it by how many cards I have, which makes it six. Then I round up to the nearest five, so ten. For every five points, I get to keep one card as a victory point in my pile. Also, for every ship that, that lands in Edo, I will take one of the victory markers of that color and place it in front of me. Now, this counts for the rest of the game as an additional multiplier for me. So if I'd had that same card before, say I'd had three of these tokens in front of me that were red, and I had a three. Well, now I'm multiplying three by five. So that's 15. I get to keep three cards. I'm going to take two the two that I've got, and then one extra one off the top of the deck and place those over as victory points. That's the only fairly complicated part is just figuring out how many cards you're going to keep each time. Um, whenever a ship makes it to Edo, any ships that are on either two of these spaces right here in the sea get destroyed and sent back to Anori. What that means is that Say yellow and blue were here and I scored red. Yellow and blue go back and every player in the game takes all of their yellow and blue cards and discards them. They're not going to be able to score them. Now in your, in your hand, you'll have cards that have insurance on them and you can pay insurance. So if I'm going to lose these two cards, I can play this one, which shows two insurance symbols and turn those sideways just to indicate that they've been insured. They are never in danger until I finally sell them and then I go back to normal for yellow. So again, you just, you're going through, when a ship scores at 8-0, it goes back to Osaka and it starts all over again, making the trip around and around and around. And you're just trying to get these achievement tokens and get more goods stacked up in your victory pile. Whenever one player has, has gotten eight of these, regardless of color, the game is over immediately. And then everyone counts up their cards in their victory pile, whoever has the most wins. If there's a tie, you break the ties by whoever's got the most tokens, most likely the person that just ended the game. Um, it's a very, very simple game. It's a lot It's a lot of fun. It doesn't take very long to play at all. I played this first the, for the first time while we were learning to play as I was going through the manual, and we played two or three games in just over an hour's time. So it's a really a light game, a fun game. There's a good amount of strategy because you don't always want... You'll look at the market and see, okay, I'm going to get a yellow card out of the market which is going to push the yellow boat into Edo. He's got four yellow goods sitting in front of him that he's going to score because everyone scores on the boat every time it lands. 
I'm going to have just the one yellow. I'm not sure that's the best use of my turn. So instead, I'm going to do something else. Now that brings you to your third action. Your third action is everyone's got a little wooden token that at the end of their turn, before they pass to the next player, they can say, I'm reserving that card. No one can buy it but me. Now that does two things. It diminishes the value of the market for all the rest of the players so that they don't have to pay as much. It also cuts off cards. So in that same example, if there's one yellow card out there and that's going to score for this guy, but it's going to do nothing for me, I place my token on it. He can't buy it, and I'm going to let that thing sit there until it's going to do me some kind of good, until it's going to actually benefit me in the game. I'll work around it. Sure, I'm costing myself the use of my lock token, but I'm doing that um, by ke to keep this guy from getting a big score out of it. You know, so there's a lot of things to keep in mind. When I score this, maybe I'm going to get to score a couple of yellow cards because the yellow boat goes in. But blue and green are in here, and I don't have any cards for insurance in my hand, and I've got a ton of those. I'm going to lose them. I can't afford to do that right now. So instead, I'm going to draw this card out of there that's got insurance on it to prepare so that when somebody else scores it, I can try and save some of my things. You know, there, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different things to think about, but really only three simple actions to be taking each turn. And so it, it simplifies what you're doing while broadening the reasons you're doing it and the way you're doing it. And I like games like that. There's not a lot of fiddly mechanics to go through. And remember that I've got to do these couple of things and these couple of things over here. And when that happens, I do this. You just got three basic mechanics. That's it. You, three, you take this action, you take this action, you take this action. It's the when, how, and why that, comp that makes the game more complex and more deep. Um, I really, I've truly enjoyed this game. I've only had it for a couple of weeks and I've played it quite a few times. I definitely think it's something that everyone should look into. And uh, if you don't like the, the Far East, go ahead, pick up Traders of Carthage. Again, same game, really fun flavor. Uh, give it a look. But for today, that's all the time we're going to have. So I'd like to thank our sponsors, Dual Bus Design, Excelsior Games and Comics, and Sound G Entertainment. And as always, I'll see you in the Nerdverse.